Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And you're right, I'm a weak man. Uh, this is the new puzzle from Fistemafel. I've just noticed it over on Logic Masters Germany. And yeah, I wanted to have a go at it. So here it is. It's jumped straight to the head of the queue. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it. It's called Spoons. I can't think why. And I'll read you the rules in just a second. Before that, there is a whole heap of stuff to tell you about. Uh, that's going on around the channel at the moment. Uh, for the aspiring setters amongst you, um, we, you should check out the Dimono video we released earlier on today in which he talks through how he set his puzzle Taco Bowl 3. Um, it's enlightening, it's charming and it's full of cleverness so I certainly commend it to you. Um, the other thing that's full of cleverness and cunning is May's reward puzzle over on Patreon. I should I say puzzle, that's doing it a complete disservice. It's a puzzle hunt by Matthias Martinka and the responses have been extraordinary and basically can be summarized in the few words favorite puzzle hunt ever for many of the entrants. Um, so I'm not surprised, to be honest, um, testing those puzzles was an absolute pleasure. So if you are a patron of the channel, please go over there, please try it. You will enjoy it. And I've got some names to read out from correct entrance. Uh, so, I mean, this is phenomenal so solving, frankly, uh, to get it done in a day or so is really terrific. So well done to Peter and Jesse Schroten van Aal. They dared us to pronounce their names right. Now, I'm, I've am i probably butchered that, but I tried. Uh, Lindsay and Aaron, uh, Anthony Bailey, uh, Saurabh Das, uh, Jerome Duman, John McCall, Harrison Stein, Daniel Steinberg, Dennis2669, uh, Peyton Lee, uh, Morris Kohler, Joe Chang, Lady Ruatha, uh, Matthew Sherlip, Freddie Carver, and Graham and Joe Criddle. Um, and oh yes, and at the end of that, I'm going to actually um, say a very belated happy birthday to Joanne Held, who turned 19 last weekend. Joanne, I am so sorry I didn't say happy birthday on your actual birthday. I had meant to. I had put a note in my diary too, and I had a complete fail. Uh, so I hope you'll forgive me, and I hope you had a great day. Um, and with that, Let's talk about the rules of Fistemafel's new puzzle. They are incredibly simple today. So uh, we have got normal Sudoku rules apply, and then we've got along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So if you've never come across a thermo Sudoku before, incredibly simple. Basically, you treat these thermos a bit like mercury rising. So you've got to put a small digit in the bulb end. Let's put a two. Now this digit has to just be higher than a two. It doesn't have to be a three, it could be a five, and then that one could be an eight, and that would be entirely consistent with the rules of thermometers. So that's all there is to it. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my first thought about this is pretty evil, to be honest. I wish in a way I was watching Mark solve this because he would pencil mark all of these thermometers and there would be about three zillion digits in the grid and that would amuse me. But I am not going to do that. I'm actually thinking I should be thinking about ones and nines just because um, there are some very simple things we can say about ones and nines on Thermo Sudoku. Ones can never go anywhere uh, on a thermometer except in the bulb end. So what we can see immediately actually is there's something interesting going on in several of the rows of this grid um, where if we look at row three for example and ask where one can go, in fact I've just noticed this is a one nine pair, you can only put one in one of these two cells here because if you try and put one partially along a thermometer, you'd have to put zero in the bulb, which is not a valid Sudoku di digit. So what we could say straight away is that one can only go in one of these two squares. But actually, let's ask a similar question about nines, because the thing about a nine and a thermometer is that nine can only go at the end of a thermometer. Otherwise, if you try and put it halfway along, you'll have to put at least a 10 in the tip of the thermometer and that won't work either. So in fact, in row three, we can immediately see there's a one nine pair. Um, and presumably I can do something similar in row seven, where again, those two squares must be a one nine pair and we have at least a little bit of progress. I mean, it's a, it's, a heck of a thing, frankly, to create 
a thermo sudoku out of entirely out of just three cell length thermometers um, now can we do something in ah yeah I see I see there's definitely some stuff going on in these rows so now now let's ask similar questions in row two so what we can say Im immediately is nine can obviously only go in one of those two positions we can't put nine in a bulb but we can also ask a sensible question about eights if we try and put eights in any of the bulbs of a three cell thermometer you'd have to put at least 10 in the tip which won't work again so there's an eight nine pair in row two and presumably that then transposes down to row six as well we've got an eight nine pair there for identical reasons and have we got something similar going on probably with low digits in row four yes we do it's exactly the same logic just inverted with twos you can't put two in a tip of a three cell thermometer or you'd have to put zero in the bulb so those squares are a one two pair which means these two squares are a one two pair and we have some sort of progress here um, I did notice on Logic Masters Germany that this Fistemafel is three stars out of five for difficulty so it is possible this might be more approachable than some of the great man's Sudokus um, so now right okay so we it's fairly obvious that this mean if we if we think actually we don't even have to look, look at look at what's going on in boxes one and two let's simply look at box three and ask where nine goes nine nine must be in one of those squares because it cannot be along a thermometer unless it's in the very end of the thermometer and there are no very end of thermometer cells in box three so a similar question to ask in box nine is where does one go and in fact one is just in one of two places look because it can't go on a thermometer unless it's in the bulb so it's got to be in one of those two cells which oh okay that's in fact entirely almost has not really done anything because it's just the corollary of what we've done over here which was to lock one in one of those two and lock one in one of these two so we know in the finished grid we've sort of got this x-wing arrangement of ones where the ones either in those two cells or those two cells in rows seven and eight nines are in this x-wing so nines no I don't like the look of nines to be honest um, hmm. okay so now we have to think so what if anything have we learned about the state of the world from this have we learned anything very useful or are we completely misleading ourselves um, the answer to that is I don't know we've got to put I don't actually even know how I'm going to complete that sentence I don't really what am I meant to be looking at here I've got to find I've got to find something I can do with this it must be something to do with eights nines and ones and twos mustn't it so maybe column three column three has a lot of you can't put eights in those two squares if you put you could put eight here um maybe no ones and nines seem to have oh nine nine doesn't have terribly many options actually in column three nine can't go on a bulb or partially along a thermometer so nines would have been a more sensible question than eights nines are in one of those two squares i've got no very good way of pencil marking that or color them those have to be nines or one of them has to be a nine we do the same in this column here ah yes right here we go so where does nine go in column four one of those two squares only because again it can only be at the end of a thermometer and i think every other cell is either a bulb or partially along a thermometer so this is interesting 
So we now know, we've now got an x-wing on nines in these positions. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean in column three, the nine is definitely in one of those two squares. In column four, the nine is definitely in one of those two squares. So we'll either have an arrangement like this in the finished grid, where the nines are in those two positions, or the nines will be in those two positions. Either way, we can rule nine out of the rest of the rows, because there'll always be a nine in one of the two positions in the purples in these rows. So we can rule nines out of all of these cells. Now, what does, ah, so that's gonna be important here. Yes, that's very interesting. In fact, that gets me a digit, right. So what? where does the nine now go in box nine? It can't be partially along a thermometer. It can't be here because of our X-wing. It can't be here or here. These are partially along a thermometer or at the start of a thermometer. Nine goes here, one goes here, and we have a digit. We can get rid of that nine. Um, which which means what exactly? It means that eight is restricted in box nine because I can't put eight here on the thermometer or this would be a nine and clash. Eight can't be in any of those three squares or you'd require a nine above it, which will clash. So eight is in one of three places, uh, which I don't know if that does anything actually. Oh, bobbins, right, okay. Um, I'm definitely not getting to grips with this. I think that I'm, I'm missing something, which is annoying me. Come on, Simon, what is, what is it I'm not spotting? Nine. It must be something to do with, I think we've got to think harder about ones and nines again. So let's have a look at we do anything oh twos i've got a definitely got a two in one of those squares actually hang on let's think about that so oh no that's absolutely hopeless two could be here or two could be in one of those three cells oh right okay well oh, what about here two is no Eight is ruled out of these squares. If you put, ah, yeah, okay. So similar thing to what I was looking at with eights down here. If eights are not in those squares because of the eight, nine pair, so we can rule eight out of the bulbs. In fact, we could have ruled the eight, eight out of the bulbs just by thinking about whether we could put 10 at the end of the bulbs. But eight is not here. If eight is in any of those three squares, you'd have to put nine in the tip and you can't. So eight is in one of those three cells. And that, that's absolutely useless, isn't it? Is that useless? Eight, if this is eight, you'd have to put eight in one of those, but you could because this could be a nine. Oh, bother. Um, two. You've got to put three in one of the tips of the Sudoku in row four. So that whichever, wherever three goes on, in it's going to be at the tip of a thermometer. So that thermometer will go three, two, one. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Okay, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. It's a puzzle, I think, that uh, Mark, Mark made for the Harry Potter hunt. Um, I can't remember what the name of the puzzle was, but Mark did something with a series of thermometers. And if you studied the logic of it, you worked out that the thermometers always had to increase or decrease in steps of one. And that's what's going on here, isn't it? Good grief. Right. OK, I think I'm on to something because let us let me try and articulate this. Once I've noticed that three has to be in a thermometer tip in row four, let's think about what that thermometer looks like. Three, well, it would, it's gonna to have to be two and then one. But now we can repeat the question. Where does four go in row four? Let's just try it here. It doesn't matter which of these go it goes into because the point will be the same. Four 
what are we going to put into this square? The key thing to realize is that you cannot put two into this square. You obviously can't put one into it because then you'd have to have zero, but you can't put two into it because the two is necessary for the three thermometer. So the only digit you can put in there is the three, and the only digit you can put in there is the two because the one won't be available, again, because of the three thermometer. Now, if you try five, what are you gonna put here? Again, the only available digit is four, and then, so you can see that it, it sort of, keeps propagating, the logic keeps propagating as you move um, up, up the digit you're putting in the tip. Now, that might be useful. In, well, yes, okay. Now we are onto something because let us think about the fact that there must be a nine in one of these two squares. What does that mean if we use this logic? Well, it means there's an eight in one of those two squares and it means there's a seven in one of those two squares which doesn't actually tell us. Oh, it doesn't actually tell us what I thought it might tell us. The same must be true here. Look, that must be an eight. That must be a seven. Ah, ah, no, hang on. Because I think, I think we've got to really pay attention here because the fact I've locked an eight into one of the tips of these three squares means one of those must be a seven and one of these must be a six. Which, what does that do? Uh, oh, I'm not sure. So, so we're still stuck, or at least I'm still stuck. You're, you guys have probably all finished this already. Um, so, I now, so now, this is very weird, isn't it? So I've gone from having an X-wing on nines to having an X-wing on eights, and an, and an X-wing on sevens, these, these positions here are forming X-wings in different digits as a result of this thermo logic. Now, how do I use that? How do we use that to get a grip on the puzzle? I can now, I'm beginning to sense that whenever you can lock any digit at all onto any of these thermos, it's going to be hugely powerful because you're going to get this propagating effect. But I don't, I don't even know whether I can, I don't know how to lock, I want to lock another digit. Um, let's have a look. Let's keep studying these two columns. These are the two columns that I think are the most restricted. So this one, that one I'm struggling with because actually high digits and low digits are all possible there. I think, I think, I think that's true. I know one of the, one of these has a nine, eight, seven triple on it, but I don't know which one. This column, this column's nine is restricted and that's how I got this one ah ah yeah okay sorry I missed this earlier but the one in column four is restricted look it can't go partially along a thermometer oh good grief right so one must oh this is this is absolutely beautiful right or at least it's very interesting because where does one go in column four? And I think it's in the positions that the seven goes in because it must be in a bulb. So one is in one of those two positions. Now we know because we know nine is in one of those two positions, we also know that seven is in one of those two positions. So this has become a one seven pair, which we can now use because we now know that 
wherever the one goes, it's on a thermometer that goes one, two, three. So this square is now either two or eight. This square is either three or nine. This, and it's the same down here. So depending on which of these thermometers begins with seven, that thermometer will go seven, eight, nine because of this logic we looked at earlier about how the thermometers have to step one at a time. And whichever one starts with one will go one, two, three. Now that means those squares have got to be four, five, and six, which, what is that doing? That means that, is it something to do with these squares now? So these three squares have to be higher than four but can't be as high as nine. So these squares have actually a lot of options, five, six, seven, or eight. Ah, ah, yes. Okay, now it's getting interesting in column five because I've not pencil marked threes and fours into this column. So three and four must make an appearance on this thermometer. So this thermometer must be two, three, four, or three, four, five. It can't be anything else because then if it's anything else, you wouldn't get a three and a four on it. Which, what's that doing? Um, don't know is the answer. I know that one of these is a nine. I know the only place seven can go and eight can go is in these three squares. So two of these three squares are seven and eight. Six is now a bit restricted in box five by these sixes, look. Those three can't be six. These three can't be six. So six is in one of those positions, which means six. Ah, okay. So this is good because now I've got another digit on a thermo here. The six in box four must be in a thermometer tip. So let's propagate that down. That means five is in one of those. Four is in one of those. It's still not good enough. None of these digits are actually hitting other other digits of the same quality. Um, hmm, okay, so something similar is going on in box two. Look, where where are five and six in this box? The answer is blowing in the wind, but it's also in the top row. So. Uh, I don't I don't know if I can use that, you know, I know that one of these thermometer squares now is a six. So it could be six, seven, eight. Or it could be five, six, seven. I'm not sure if I know which of those is. Do I know which of those is correct and which of those is not correct? That's our question. <laughs> That's the question I'm trying to get to grips with. Um, oh dear, sorry about this. Um, so can we do anything else now? That's the next question. Can we do anything else? If I know one of these is six, I know one of these is four. I've got an eight, nine pair. No. There must be some restriction in terms of what can go in these bulbs, because I can't 
5 is it definitely in one of those. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Yeah, okay. Because 5 is in one of those squares and 5 is in one of these squares, 5 is on a bulb in box 3, which means 6 is halfway along a thermometer and 7 is at the top end. So now, now I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, because now the question that I should be asking is where does six go in row two of the grid? Six is not in those cells because we know it must be in row three in this box because the five is in a bulb. So six is not there. Six is not in any of those three squares. So six is in one of, in fact, one of those two squares where it meets its friend the four. So this is a four six pair and that square can't be a seven. Now, if that can't be a seven, what did that mean? Well, yes, this is beautiful. This is beautiful because now I knew if this was 9, that had to be 7. So this is no longer 9. And if this is no longer 9, we know that the 9s are in those two positions. And that must be a start because that's going to allow us to do some work. Look, now that must be 9, 8, 7. Now this must be 3, 2, 1. And this is a 4, 6 pair. Oh, in fact, look, we've got loads going on here. This 8 is resolving this 9-8 pair. That's resolving the 1-9 pair. That's resolving the 2-1 pair. And these two squares now have to be one higher than these two. So this, this has to be a 5-7 pair. So we may as well actually just notate that. And then this will have to be a 6-8 pair. Five, seven, six, eight, which, oh, no, no, we can, I was just looking down here. Look, this two is seeing this one, which is giving us a two there. The moment we get this one, we get the nine and the one, the eight and the nine. Eight comes out of the end of this thermo. Eight comes out of the end of this thermo. Where, uh, where, where does 2 go in box 2 of the grid? It can't go here. It doesn't seem to be able to go on there. And it can only go there. And once this becomes 2, that must be 3, 4. Oh, which actually doesn't seem to do very much. We can get rid of 8 at the bottom of the grid. 2, 3, 4. So now those squares are 1, 2, 3, triple. We can place the 1. We can place the 2 and the 3. Gorgeous. This square is a 4, 5, or a 6, just completing that box. Now, those squares are now known. Look, they are 1, 3, and 5. So let's put that in because that's going to allow us to immediately fill those squares in with 2, 4, and 6, and these squares with 3, 5, and 7. Again, just making sure these thermometers are increasing one each time. Now... What can we do with that? We can get rid of one from this thermometer. So again, we can get rid of two and three. And those squares have got to be a seven, eight, nine triple with this not being a nine. And let's see what else we can spot now. Can we, oh, look, six, eight pair, there's an eight here, so we can carry on. We can go eight, seven, six, we can go six, five, four. Now these columns are suddenly restricted. We need four and five into these two squares. We need two and three into those squares. There's a two here though. Yeah, that's lovely. So that fixes everything. Two and three go in. Well, not actually not everything. There's now definitely a two in one of those squares, which means there's definitely a three in one of these squares and a four in one of these squares. Um, okay, now what is it we do next? We must be, I feel like we're doing okay all of a sudden. Famous last words. Um, what you can't do 
is you can't put a 3 in one of those squares. Because if you put a 3 in one of those squares, you have to put a 4 in one of these squares, and that will clash with the 4 that must appear on the thermometer that starts with a 2. So if you can't put 3 in there, you must put 3... Ah, uh, okay. 3 in one of those two squares. I hope I can do the same thing. This is really clever. It really is just... It's classic Fistemafel. Just elegance personified, because... The logic I just did there with 3 also works for 5, doesn't it? Because if I put 5 in there, I will have to put 7 in one of these three squares because it will have to go 5, 6, 7. And that 7 will, cl will clash with the 7 that belongs on the 6 thermometer. So 3 and 5 do not live in those squares, which means they live in those two squares, which means that... Means that's four six, that's four six, that's five seven, that's five seven. I sort of I'm pretty sure I'm missing some basic Sudoku now. That feels like oh good grief. Look, where does eight go in this box? It must go at the end of the thermo. This column oh, is so close to being a quadruple. This square's got to be three, four. Oh, hang on, that's not right. It's never four. That's not four. Three, five, six, or seven. Um, yeah, okay. Well, here's some more logic. This square is a three or a five. Now, if it's a three, there's always a five on the thermo. And if it's a five, there's always a 5 on the thermo. So there is always a 5 in one of those squares, which means there is no 5 here and no 5 here. Which... Oh, bother. Ah, oh, 7 can't go there. That might be useful. That means 6 is not there. This is coming down. It's still not resolved. No, it's not resolved, actually. That's surprising. Um, okay, well, let's let's pencil mark these thermometers a bit more fully because we've now we now know what's on them. This is a two, four, six triple. So these squares are three, five, and seven, and these squares are four, six, and eight. And this square here must now be a two. And that 2, look, gets rid of a 2 on this thermometer, which gets rid of a 1 and 3 around it, which now seems to tell me that 1 can only be here in this box, which is weird. But I'm definitely taking it. 2, 3. So now 2 can't be on this one. So we can get rid of the 2, 3, 4 combo. It must be about to crack now, I think. Um... Those squares there have got to be 1, 8, and 9. You can see the 1 must go here, the 9 must go here, the 8 must go here. So though... No, it's still not resolved, is it? So this is 3, 4, 4, three, four 5, 6, 7. It's, ah, it's not 6 or 7, 3, 4, or 5. And it's not five, is it? Because we know that when a thermometer starts with a three or a five, it must have a five on it. So that's a three or a four. Ah, got that's it. Right, okay. Look at this square. This is a three or a four. So how can this ever be a three? It can't be because of the one step steps that they have to go. It would have to go three, four, five, and this square would have no value. So this is telling us that this is a five, this is a six, this is a seven which makes that a 4, that a 5, that a 3. This 3 is plonking well. Okay, that 5 was doing the same work, but that's all finished now. Let's get rid of those. Um, let's get rid of this. This can't be 3 anymore. This column is done. Look, we can place a 4 down here. That fixes the 6 and the 7. That fixes the 5. This must be 6. This must be 7. That gets a 5 on that thermometer, which fixes all of the top of the grid. And now we've just got to resolve this last... Ah, uh, this 8 probably doing it, is it? Yeah, that looks nice, because that gives us an 8 and a 9. 
This 8 is removing 8 from there, which gets all of that done. There's a 4, 6 pair in the column now, those two squares. So this square can no longer be a 4 and has to be a 2, which fixes the thermometer. Fixes this thermometer as well. I mean, what a puzzle. Every time, he just amazes me. It's just incredible. Um, 4, 5 and 6 come out. So the only... Well, this must be done. Why is it not done? Ah, it's the 4. 4 ruled out of there, so this must be 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, 8, and that must be 4, 5, 6. And we click tick, and that is how to solve yet another work of genius from the great man, Fistimafel. Just, I mean, I'm a bit lost for words, to be honest. That you could create something this elegant out of a pattern of spoons, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It really is. The ideas, the simple ideas around the pairs that are left out in these rows, that's really clever. But the, the really, really clever thing is the fact that he's able to make use of the fact that each of these thermometers has to have a one step increase. Um, and the way that that sort of, you could whittle away at the ends of the thermos and lock things into position, it's, it was just beautiful, as always, quite, quite stunning. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.